Ashbourne, Derbyshire, England. I came here to take part in the biggest game of football in the world. During the Middle Ages, mass games of football were played on Shrove Tuesday and Ash Wednesday in towns throughout Britain. But only a handful of games survive today, and the game in Ashbourne is by far the biggest. Generation after generation have enjoyed this crazy game, and today it's bigger than ever, with thousands of people attending each day. When I turned up at Ashbourne, all I really knew about the game was that if you were born north of the river, you were an upward, and if you were born south of the river, you were a downward. Oh, and that the goals were three miles apart. So, I had three days to meet the locals, learn the rules, and hopefully get a taste of what's been keeping this tradition going for over 900 years. So I thought, best place to start would be the pub. What do we expect then at the start of the day? Well, the two teams will meet at in two pubs. The upwards will meet at the box, more or less, and the downwards will meet at the wheel. They'll all get together and then go down to the uh, plinth at two o'clock. Yeah. get sucked in and then it'll get chucked up again and we just try and get it to whichever way you're going really. The downers are all trying to get it towards Clifton and the upwards are trying to push it over the wreck and get it into the field. Yeah. What's it like being in there like? It's, it's rough on it, yeah. It's yeah. Tight, tight. yeah. Especially at the start because there's so many people you see all trying to get it. You lift your feet off the floor. Off the, floor. Yeah. the next day one of the locals, Mark Bailey, off to show me the course. So I met him in the morning where the game starts. Waitrose car park. So this is it then, bud? This is it, mate. This is where it gets thrown up. So Tuesday, they sing uh, a few songs. There's a few things spoken about, like rules, keeping out the churchyards and stuff. Yeah. And basically it's thrown off. <laughs> All this will be full. You know, like runners still at the back here, um, on the outsides, and then, then the big hug is gathered around this area here at the front. The ball could come down here. And yeah, the ball come. could just come down here before it's even gone up. That's where I live up Park Road, you see. Yeah. The ball's been up there before, but it comes down here, it will come to the, the junction here, then it's basically pushed up Belper Road. That's towards the uppers. Yeah. Or it could even go back into town and around the town line. Back in the day, the two goals were actually mills. But now they've been replaced by two stones. Yeah, so it's brought all the way up the fields and roughly around that area gets broken and then taken to the gold. So you'd have to be you'd have to be in the water then to them. Um, to gold ball. Yeah. 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 See the circular bit there? Yeah. That's where that's to touch. So you need you need a you need um you'd need your mates with you really, wouldn't you have to lift you up to them yeah. Yeah. to be able to do it. <laughs> Does it have to be three times, like Three times, yeah. Yeah. It's lovely, mate. Yeah. Great stuff. Any tips for me, then, eh, hey, Mark? Yeah, mate, yeah. Um, just run really well, mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, when you've got the ball, don't you? Oh, right, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> if I get the ball, I'd just like to touch the ball. Uh, you'll like... touch it, mate. You'll definitely touch it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, you'll be there. Just got to get involved, isn't just, it? Just get involved, mate, yeah. No, that's the thing. On the way to the other goal, Mark pointed out the places you couldn't take the ball. Churchyards, kids' playgrounds, memorial gardens. He showed me the routes the ball might take. It was only then that I started to realise the sheer scale of this game. That 
Next, I popped over for a cup of tea with Yvonne. She's been putting herself in the middle to film this game for years. Hello, mate. How are you? <laughs> Yvonne? Are you all OK with the dog? Oh, marvellous, yeah. Love him, love him. Hello, I'm Dave. It is just amazing. I mean, people used to say to me, you are really stupid going up a stepladder to film this game. You, you're going to get hurt. You really are. But you see, they've got people that are looking out for for anybody Any, that, any bystanders and that stuff. Might, you might think, whoa, what a dangerous game. But, no, but there, it, that's the great thing about, like, it's, it's you know, Traditional game, there's dangers, but you know what you're going in yes, for. You know yes. what I mean? It's it's your choice to go and have a go. That's right. But it's also the sense of community that is that yes, is here. Yeah. Everyone, you know, I know people are saying that you know once it comes uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, don't talk to the to the opposition and stuff. But none of them would ever see the other one get hurt badly. Oh no, definitely you know, um, not. And and they're all looking out for each other. And I think that yes, is that, I think that's amazing. And, and there's not enough of that anymore. No, oh, in this no. country or in no. most places, really, but, it's, it's getting I mean, lost. What, what I think is so amazing because people in Ashbourne tend to sort of the older people seem to have stayed here. You could imagine that some of the players whose families. A de descendants, they could trace their ancestors right back into the distant past, and so over the years, that's built up inside them, isn't yeah. it? That um, that you know, great uh, great oh, f feeling for the game. Yeah. Mm. You don't realise till you get here how ingrained in people's lives this game is. The more I spoke to people, this mad old tradition just didn't seem mad anymore. This wasn't just a crazy old game, it was a way of life. I mean, how many, how many balls do you have to paint? Um... Well, Simon and I, because we're the ball painters, we do one yeah. each. Um, Simon's done Shrove Tuesday this time. Shrove yeah. Tuesday for Jim Bowden, yeah. Yeah. It's the first ball for both days are painted. Right, yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, when did you get your ideas for the... Um, for the, uh, for the, the person who's throwing it up, realistically, he, he sort of tells you what he wants on it. Traditionally, you have the Union Jack and yeah. the Imperial Crown. Mm. Um, apart from that, anything, anything. anything within, within reason goes. Sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the original one. Yeah. That That's how I gold it. Wow. So this hasn't been repainted no. because do you have to repaint them after the game usually? Um, it, it just depends on the individual goal, or I mean, some people do. I mean, they tend to lose the artwork a lot this year. I mean, Nick was quite very fortunate with this mm. that it retained all its artwork as it is, and I personally like to see them like that because it looks like you know they were turned up that way. They yeah. had some hammer in the game, and then they came back in a sort of a. Um, a state that's sort of recognisable, but not every ball comes back like that. I mean, now they tend to lose all the paintwork, so there's nothing yeah. left at all. Because they do some mileage, don't they? These things, like the amount of hands that have touched these well, that balls. Had, that had five hours of play, it? Five hours? Yeah. How, how many goals do you usually usually score in, 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 in a day? Nowadays, you, you look down to, down one. to one if, you, if you're lucky. <laughs> really, yeah. <laughs> I was saying, this time of year, from November time, it's probably the fittest town in the country to yes. people Yeah, they're running everywhere, every yeah. yard. You won't have to go far tonight, fine. Really? Yeah, you sit about around town, well, on the outskirts of town, you'll see him coming past you. Yeah. This is one of our secret ways. Yeah, come, come here, son. So you're, you're a runner. The ball's always going to run. I've run all the way down here. Come on, let's go! You go training most nights, do you? Yeah, for them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Three or four times a week. Three or four times a week. Yeah. Any chance of coming out with you sometime? Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. Can you run, Dave? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm up, I'm up for everything. You know what I mean? It's been a long day, so I met up with my new mate Harry Haircut for a bit I of a deep. I went down to him. Um, Went to the uh, up its goal and then the down its goal. So that, yeah, that's 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 the right that's the right direction, isn't it? Definitely the right direction. Yeah, yeah. I ended up I ended up uh, getting in and touching both of them like. Did you really? Yeah. Your feet wet. I got, got fucking up to here in my jeans. I just got got in in my jeans, like went, waded over and waded over and give him a little tap. It's probably the closest I'm going to get to them, like you know what I mean. Well, that's a fact. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I just got in there and had a day, had a had a good day, had a good go. We can imagine when there's three or four hundred people around that goal. It's uh, airy. Yeah. I'm just wondering how 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 are you going to get in there and get a good look, like? What for uh, the locals? You mean? 
or well, well, I'll, I'll, yourself? I'll, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you won't get anywhere near it when it's down there. Yeah. You just won't allow it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you won't even it's see a, it. It's a really personal way that's down there. Yeah, fuck yeah. Any outsiders will yeah. just get battered with really. <laughs> 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 nice one, yes, don't even bother. Well, I mean, we've, it's been going for a few hundred years and no outside has ever gone there. Yeah, no, so. no. So would you, uh, would you, you know, like, tactics-wise and stuff like that, you know, you, you, you have all meetings and shit like that beforehand, is that right? Yeah, we have a few meetings, yeah. Would you have a man up in the, up in the, um, up in the fields? Cutting down little fences and stuff, stuff to there to get through, and if you get the ball going, we, we've through never that. Done, we've never done that because we've not got the as much. We've got more access our end. Mm. Once we get past the town. <laughs> to be fair, it's harder for them when it gets in the fields because they've got all fences and edges to get through. Yeah. Whereas we haven't. See, we can go straight down the road. Whereas yeah. they can only go up the road so far and then they've got to cut down a lane. Yeah. So they, they have before took fences down and done all sorts of yeah. uh, Tied rags, they, what, they, what they used to do was they'd take a fence down, mm. right, and they'll tie a white, used to tie a white rag in, a, in um, a tree above it, so they could just look up, see the rag, and they know the fence. And they know that the fence, that, that's, where, that's where you got it, that's where you can run through. Yeah. I heard the Shrotai committee were going to be having the pre-game dinner in the sports centre. So the next day, I popped up to see if I could find Mick Betridge, the committee secretary. Mick? Hello, Mick. It's great to see a, a, a small town. Everyone loves it so much, and you can see it running through people's veins. And just going around talking to people, it's oh, yeah. you know they're, they're, they're fired up. Yeah, and some of these lads will have trained all year. Mm. Mm. Very, very serious training. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's in their blood, and they're incredibly passionate about it. Mm. Um, when you witness it tomorrow on Wednesday, you'll you'll come to that realization. I realize it now, to be honest. Yeah. You know, you see it from an outsider's point of view, and you think, oh, you know. It's, a whole town coming out to play a game of football over three miles, that's a little bit mad, like. Mm. But when you get here, it doesn't become mad anymore. I, th I think it, from the outside, and especially if you, if you take the wrong sort of slant on it, and we have had film crews that have come here mm. and tried to portray it as some sort of madness, a, a riot in action with little or no rules or regulations, yeah. but in fact it is very carefully organised mm. by the players themselves yeah. and by the officials on the outside. Mm. Yeah. You know, these things have to be cherished, I think. Very much so. And especially when you see how much it means to people in the town. Mm. Mm. And like going out with the lads, you know, I've, I've, been, I've, been, I've been out and about, you know, I've done, done a fair bit of drinking with the boys, you know, and, you know, from the uppers and the downs, you know what yeah. I mean? And, and they love it. They proper love it. Mm. And, it's, and it's got me completely sucked into it now. Mm. Yes. Now I've just got to decide who I'm going to push for, you see. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not planning on just coming to watch, like, I'm going to get, I want to get involved. Well, you're north of the river, you must be from... Yeah, you Sefton see them. ..or something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're going to be an upper. <laughs> yeah, are you an upper? I'm a downer. Mm. Um, you see, this is, this is the, uh, the dilemma that I'm having, Mick, at the moment. Yeah. Because I'm... I've, I've... I would be neutral if I were you at first. Mm. Safer. Well, I don't think it's—I don't think it is safe, and actually, to be honest, Mick, because I've been—I've been speaking to these lads, and you know, I've been hanging around with the uppers. You're an upper. Been hanging around the downers. You're a downers. You've got—you know—you've got—you've got to pick. If, if any of them, Bill, recognise me now. If any of them see me pushing the wrong way, I'm going to get lamped. <laughs> so so I've, I've got—I've got a kind, I've got a kind of thing. Yeah. Well, don't come and complain to me if you. Do. I won't be complaining. I know exactly what I'm getting myself into. <laughs> So, I went for a run with Psycho. Yeah. I learned a few things that day. One, <laughs> I run like a girl. Two, I need to cut down on the smokes. And three, now I know why I used to bunk off PE.
<laughs> no, I had to call you psycho now, mate. <laughs> so, you do this holding the ball. Yeah. For like a for mile and a half. Mile and a half. Jesus. So how'd you get into being a runner? Um, just went running one day and with the lads and found I was all right at it. <laughs> Thought I'd be a runner rather than over. Rather than a hugger, rather yeah. than getting in the middle of it and getting crushed. Yeah. <laughs> so you stand round outside the hug, waiting for the, uh, the ball to come out. Yeah. How long could you be standing there for? All day. Standing there all day and nothing will happen. Yeah. So. Sitting there just waiting. So when the ball gets chucked up, does it stay in the square for...? Yeah, it can stay in the square for about three, four hours. Yeah. Five hours. Like last year, before it broke, it was only about, moved about 10 metres from the plinth. Yeah. Went round town and back. Yeah. 10 metres from the plinth in about five hours place. Jesus. See, so you've got you've got hold of the ball, it's broke. You've got a thousand people chasing after you up the street. What's yeah. going through your mind? Like, <laughs> don't catch me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I fell in love with the game when I was a kid. My mum used to bring me when I was about eight or nine, and started. I started coming. I used to. She used to let me play when I was nine on my own, obviously from a distance, and then um, I just always fell in love with it. So, just still try, I try and I try and run after it now. <laughs> um, it's different now, you know. Like the game's slightly different. It's a little bit more of a team game now, and um, when I started playing in the 70s, when I was at school, it was more you turned up with your friend. It was more of an individual game, really, to be honest with you, so. But I think it's because the numbers are that big now, you've got to play as a team, haven't you, Dave? I think that's, the, the that's numbers the went, in, in the 90s, it went... Well, to give you an example, I used to turn up in the eight, early 80s. I just left school then, and I reckon with spectators, and players and everyone in, or the old shebang would probably be about 12, 14, 1500 people. Yeah, somewhere around that. Yeah. Now you're looking at yeah. probably between four and five thousand people with spectators each day. Uh, players, I'd call, what would you say, I'd call players now? Yeah, there's, there's probably, including runners. 600? Yeah, about 600 hardcore players. Who are like mad for it, you know. Yeah. Then you'll have a lot of people joining in. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you've, got, you've, got the, you've got the fellas in the hug. So they... All the, all the rugby boys really, is it? Well, not really. There's no. not lads here at all. Players are not rugby. I think really. you spoke to the uppers then when you're saying all the rugby. rugby. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, mate. It's, it's a bit like rugby, though, mate, in the respect that, you know, in rugby you have the forwards and your backs. Yeah. You've got all your, your big ugly meatheads, like us, who go in the... Him. <laughs> yeah. Who go in the... Play manager. And, yeah. And that's, that's the kind of people having the up. But then you've got all the fit lads like Brandon and Lee and Scally and Kev used to be. <laughs> <laughs> Round the outskirts, waiting for the ball to pop out, and then if they get it, we're not going to see it again for dust, because they're going to see we're all big fat idiots who've got to keep up. So. You get people who do both as well, don't you? Yeah, we yeah. do, like Scally and me, and some of the lads do both as well. You do, it mixes it up. It's all, the game's changed that much. From that when Clay so Manari was playing, it was all big heavy hitters and all that from the other, and all that, they weren't as big now. The lads have got like, be fit as well to keep up with the ball, you know what I mean? It's yeah. changed, it's evolving. In the last five, ten years, yeah, it's, it's evolved. Like a sport, and uh, yeah. now, like the big heavy, like that like John, last first year, last year, was put his trains on, now he's running around, he was playing steel to poke that boost before that. Yeah. Now the lads have got to do both. Yeah, because lads are that fit now, they're training all year, four games gone. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we'll break the ball, we'll run one, <coughs> one 800 metres, then we'll, we'll maul it, then we'll run another 800 metres, we'll maul it. In time, it's usually hugged all the time, but when you start breaking, it starts to break up a lot more than it used to, because the uppers, they're all rugby lads, and when they used to dominate it all the time, have so many superior numbers, they used to play a rugby game and just hug the ball all the way up there. To so just push? Yeah, yeah. But now, yeah. now we're equaling it out, and we've got young lads coming through now, and we're equal the numbers out to now. They can't do that to us as much now. Yeah. So the game seems to break up a little bit more now. Yeah. They start to get a bit but more open, moves. more open and breaking and that, because they've got to do it as well if they want to score balls. When it goes down, you've got to think is there'll be, it'll be about six, seven hundred people in that. They just keep coming. happens for about 10, 15, 20 seconds before people start backing off, people automatically start backing off them and it feels like the old world's ending. <laughs> you see the daylight, the daylight starts going. Close. <laughs> any tactics, doesn't matter. Stop yeah. them scoring. What, what, is, is there any rules like? Yeah, just there's, there's a few rules. Basically, you can't travel with a ball in a motorised vehicle. Basically. Uh, you, you don't play in churchyards. 
place of the worship, you know, yeah. the building site, but that's it. A murder. No murder. So um, you use a uh, downs. Yeah. yeah. And what's the, what's, the, what's, what's the banter with your mates? So like you got mates who were up and there and you... you, you we have a laugh before I know it. Yeah. Months leading up to it. On the two days, not mates. Yeah, no, basically. it's on the two days. Not He's your enemy, really. Yeah. So, so what gets mad? Yeah, so what, what come, come Monday you stop talking to your mothers then? Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah most likely. People will come in here Monday night and they'll probably meet up with the boss or something. So yeah. then we're all separate then. Yeah. Just down and see that. No, no, one, no one talks. So I've heard about families being divided as well with like mothers and dads because someone was telling me about um, uh, something he got, he got, he got bored and he was bored in the, the hospital, which is. I think that's up, is it? Yeah. It's not there anymore now, is it? No, it's maternity. 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 Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was born in the maternity home, but then his brother, his mum gave birth to him in the, in the house. <laughs> that's my dad. Yeah. Is that you? Yeah, yeah. someone was telling me the story he's, he's saying about him. Yeah. Um, I was born at Clifton. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and he's, he's saying about... We're on opposite sides. Yeah, yeah, you just don't talk to each other. <laughs> no one comes round, no one comes round for dinner, then um, once it comes Monday, it's like that. Fuck off, you're no brother of mine! <laughs> well, that money is already now. Yeah, We're really? already now, yeah. Started. Yeah. Last night, yeah, yeah. We've stopped talking now, mate. Deleted his deleted <laughs> number from your phone. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> yeah. Oh, mate, that's brilliant, lads. It's good to, uh, good to have a gap with you anyway, and... Uh, Good luck for fucking Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah, boys. And you. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right, I'm getting involved, yeah? yeah. yeah. Pushing for the diamonds. That's it, mate. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> 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 The game was getting closer, the shops had been boarded up and the whole town was starting to shut down ready for the game. It really started to weigh on my mind that both teams were expecting me to play for them. I had a bit of a dilemma on my hands. I mean, I didn't want to upset anyone in the town because everyone was great. Plus, they were all really big. There's only one with two jumps, which is dark. There's only one, and everyone's a down, so the game is finished. So you've got to follow your family. Yeah, of course, yeah, to keep, yeah, to keep it going. Side life? I don't know what to do. It's like every, everyone's, everyone's great. So, what, you know, where do we go? I'm still done. 12 hours. Make me mad though. Woke up this morning. I was uh, I was getting all excited. Right? And uh, you're not nervous. No, no. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm not nervous at all. No. Get myself kitted up, really. See the size of some of these boys. <laughs> it's a down its tradition for the elite players to go for a stew the morning of the game. I felt quite honoured to be invited. During my time in Ashbourne, Harry Aircourt really took me under his wing. He was one of my mates now. How's it going, lad? Hi, boys. How's it going? 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 All the, uh, all the gents playing the dominoes, had a little gab with them, you know what I mean? Had a gab with Ernie Grant. You go, you go in the middle. I'm going to have a You're in for a shock of your life, mate. Well, I'll give you one advice. Try and get in the main <laughs> centre. Get in the centre and the semicircle, and then after you, after you've got about three, if it's three men in front of you, you're going to have all the push, push, all the strength to be on that outer ring. Yeah. Your fourth line in, that's where it all hits you. Yeah. And if you're getting anywhere near, you, you know if you're on the outside, there's a lamppost coming up against the wall. Mm. Try and get in between the lamppost and the wall. So the, all the hitting is lamppost and not you. So yeah. the ball will come to you. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then get rid of it quick as no, quick no. as before anyone chins you. The <laughs> easiest thing, if you, get, you do get on your hand, try and roll yourself up over the top of it. Yeah. Pick your feet up and they'll carry you. Oh. Ernie, Ernie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good egg, man. Did you uh, <coughs> go to box? 
I've seen a few of the lads outside the vaults here, so I went over and had a little chat with them. It's a good old game, <laughs> deny it if you can, but tries the pluck of an English man. I've seen other coaching horses there and met up with Brendan and Barry. It's yeah, been really, really hard work tomorrow because of the weather. Expecting yeah. the spectators are about. Spectators are about to fall, aren't they? You want it as cold and as wet as possible, really, to keep everybody away. We just narrow it down until you just got the hardcore players. It's like adults' Christmas, isn't it? Oh, yeah. What are you on about now? All in one. That's it, yeah. You've got to sleep. Yeah, <laughs> the first first hour kills me. It kills everybody. Absolutely yeah. everybody, because your body's got to adapt to what's happening. Yeah. I'll go in the arm, I'll trade away, get body used to it, and all the aches and pains we have from that body in agony. Yeah. And then you just you just walk into it. Get through the pain. You don't yeah. stand around waiting to get in. Get in. Yeah. At the beginning. Get in. Sad. Good advice, I'll do that. Straight in. Oh, she could relive the goal on that. Oh, yeah. 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 We don't do clarify which way you're playing. Let's clarify. Well, you see, you've got this dilemma, haven't you? You know, you've got. <laughs> you have, we haven't. You've got a dilemma, not us. Cut to the chase, you've never had a bullshit. Right. I'll give you all, I've got to give a little bit of bullshit, mate. That's, that's in me. It's got to be a little bit. Yeah, but he's So, if you're born up at the river. Yeah. North, you're up. North, you're up. You're born south. You're down. But you can't be born up anymore. So, you have to go with your family, don't you? Yeah. Yes, brother. So I made my choice and I was playing for the downwards. When the game started, I wasn't really sure what to do. So I thought, just get stuck in. There was people everywhere, and to be honest, I didn't really have a clue what was going on. ball popped up and went to the culvert, which runs underneath the car park. We hung around in the river for a bit before the ball was thrown up over the wall and it headed into town. It went all the way up the town and then all the way back down again. It took about an hour for the downers to force the ball up the street, but when they did, it was a mad dash into the fields to keep up with it. After a while, the ball popped up and shot down the tunnel I'd just come out of, and that was the last I saw of it. 15 minutes and about a mile later, news filtered through the crowd that it was 1-0 the downwards. Nice. Nice. 
Christoph. I was, I was, I was, I was, I was about, it was one row in front of me and I was there, and right in. Give me that. The rules state that if the ball's goal before five, then another one's turned in. So, here we go again. basically hung around the car park till it got dark. I was taking a bit of a breather when the ball broke free and shot down the road. From, from when it broke down the tunnel, um, 15 minutes later, the ball was gone. Right. It was so quick. Uh, yeah. um, we, we were driving country lanes trying to get there. They beat us. Crazy. It's hot. The Uppards knew that it was their runners who had the ball, so it was a scramble to get up to the goal. They weren't running. While all this was happening, I ran the wrong way and ended up in a field somewhere. The upper lads managed to get up to the goal just before the ball arrived. Yeah, I got a touch of the ball a few times yesterday. Yeah, when it broke for the down, it's, I was in there by the ambulance and it came over and I ended up getting pushed up against the ballard but managed to get free of that. But uh, I was right there in the middle with the ball. I got a good, good, good slap on the ball a few times and it flicked up and arms going everywhere. It's a lot more worked out than it looks. It looks like just the melee of people trying to get a ball. But when it broke and went down that tunnel, it was gone for dust. And they'd had that all organised. So there's lads on the outside saying which way to go. There's, there's boys looking up on the top, trying to read the game and giving instructions to the lads in the hug what way to push and where to pull it and coming up with ideas of how to get that ball away and then all of a sudden it breaks and they're all waiting like i ran down that tunnel and it was gone for dust apparently they kicked it all the way down that tunnel and then within 10 minutes it was a mile and a half away and it had been the goal had been scored so they've, they've got it all planned out some athletes these boys as well it's your first time into it yeah yeah. Did you ever think it's going to be like this? Did you ever think that you know? That it's, it's, yeah, the intensity and the, yeah. and the may, and when you get it, when you get into that hug, like, and everyone's arms are going, and you want to, you want to grab the ball yourself. Yeah. You're like, I want to go, and it's like, <laughs> when, when I was down in the day, um, I was down, got down by the culvert, yeah. and the ball was in the culvert, and it was, um, it was all dark, and then you can't see anything, just the steam coming out the top, and you can just do. <laughs> and all you can yeah, think, yeah. you think if I go down here, nobody's going to find me. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At one point, when it was coming down, when it came out of the river and went round the back, and then it come onto that road going up towards the tunnel, uh, I was in there and, and we were getting pushed back. 
and it, you, you, yeah. obviously you can't push forward when your legs are like that. And in the end, I just lifted up my knees and rode with yeah. it until until yeah. until, until, well. until my legs came. Yeah, yeah, until yeah. my legs came back and then put them pushed forward. Yeah. Sometimes you've got to lift both your legs up anyway. Yeah. And then the whole whole thing kept me carrying. Yeah. Best. Otherwise, you you go under. You go under. Yeah. Bang in the middle. You, there's less pressure than anywhere else. A yard and a half, two yards away. Yeah. Mm. Massive awesome. pressure on the chest. And Normally, I break ribs and things like that in there. Yeah. When you're like a yard and a half away, but bang on the on the ball. They're cancelling each other, the forces are on there. Yeah. You know, you can do things better. Yeah. You can manoeuvre better. Yeah. Yeah. Last night, this was a really early finish. Normally, yeah. when yeah. it starts coming nine and half nine, and the ball is getting close to one of the goals, and yeah. you just, you've no energy, and you, you're saying to yourself, if it's near Cliff and you're saying to yourself, we just have to get it that last bit, but you're trying to find yeah. where the energy, and it's the temperature's dropped that bit, where you're, you're saying to yourself, I have to be in the hole to stay alive and stay warm. Yeah, but at the yeah. same time, you don't want to. You can't do it. Anything in there yeah, and just yeah. literally being dragged along. Eight or nine o'clock at night, when it's cold, cold night, you truly will see how people are slowing down in yeah. their motions. And yeah, yeah. Everything is not as intense as how it is yeah. in the middle of the town when it first comes took tactical, that. Yeah. really tactical. Yeah. Comes tactical. Now what you've got to do is defend your mental state. Why yes. do you carry on doing this every yeah. year? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all hard. That's and it gets very problem. tactical. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> more intense in the middle this time. One, I think the lads were a lot more fired up with the scores being the way they were, and with it being the last day. Plus, I was battered from the day before. Every time someone would shout for the downward lads to push, you felt like you had to get in there. But once I was in there, I needed to get out. told how the ball can sometimes stay in the same place all day, but not this ball. Once it left the square, it went up the street, down the street, into the river, along the river, out the river, back in the river, across the field, up the lane. It probably done the equivalent of a half marathon before Simon Betridge, Mick's son, got hold of it. And when he did, it was gone. Two on the downs. The down had scored before five again, so another ball was chucked up. went everywhere again. It was in the ponds, the bogs, basically anywhere that was wet. 
The Uppers were starting to gain the advantage and were slowly pushing the ball up to their goal, but the Downers went toe to toe and they battled it out till dark. I've been up to me tits in water, dragged through the bramble bushes, and I smelt like a toilet after being in the bog, but I couldn't give up. The battle kept going on until about 8 o'clock, and just as the downers were starting to gain the upper hand, the ball broke through the hedge. Now it was a fight to get out the fields and get up to the goal. We got wind that it was going the downers way, so I got the nod off one of the lads and I jumped in the back of his van and we headed up to Clifton. But it wasn't going that way. It turned out that during the madness, my mate Psycho had got his dirty little mitts on the ball and headed up to the upwards goal. Two, two. That's what happens when you train with Dave Art. give it a good go, like, and it's great. It's great being an Ashburnian. And when the ball broke through the hedge, the boys slap on the ass. Come on, jump in the van with us. We're going, we're going to try and find it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We had to climb through hedges and stuff to get out. And I am absolutely battered, and I think I'm going to ache for ages, but it's left a massive smile on my face. I love this place. After two days play, which sees a town divided by fierce rivalry, Everyone comes together as people of Ashbourne to pick up the litter and fix whatever's broken. I came along to do me bit and to see me mates for the last time. This morning, I had to shave for the first time in about two weeks. I grew a beard over the past two days, the amount of testosterone that was flying through me blood. <laughs> Before coming to Ashbourne, I'd heard stories about this place in the game, but nothing could have prepared me for the last five days. I've laughed and joked with these people, shared stories and broke bread with them. I've drank with them and been crushed to the point of breathlessness by them. And I've got to say, I've loved every minute of it. In a country of dying traditions, it's a breath of fresh air to see one that's so important to a community. In Ashbourne, Shrovetide's bigger than Christmas. It's the heartbeat of this town, and to think that it could be threatened by an age of health and safety, for me, is madness. I think it's important to protect this game, and if you want to come and see it for real, pop along. You'd be hard pushed to find people who are more hospitable, but don't come here thinking that just because there isn't many rules, it's a free-for-all. There is etiquette amongst the players, and they all respect each other, and the game. Cheers, <laughs> man. Well, kiss next. Oh, no, yeah, come here, sweet. <laughs> Where's my wallet? <laughs> There's a town still plays this glorious game, though it is but a little spot. And year by year the contest fought from a field that is called Shawcroft, where friend meets friend in friendly strife the leather for to gain and they play the game right manfully in snow sunshine and rain 
It's a good old game, deny it who can, that tries the pluck of an Englishman. It's a good old game, deny it who can, that tries the pluck of an Englishman. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> See you later.